Hello, boys and girls. For those of you who don't recognize me without my magnificent, wonderful facial hair, my name is Miles. Now, many of my adoring fans have asked me, well, well, they would have asked me if they existed, Miles, how does the rest of season one of Legion possibly compare to that premiere? Now, I gotta say, I had the exact same fears myself. With all the excitement and hype and mystery surrounding that premiere, it was near perfect. Now, the rest of season one, even if excellent, might look very tame. And I gotta say, after episode two, they gave me the answer. And that is just an excellent plot. Now, let's delve into it in my review of episode two of Legion. Let's go. Now on to everyone's favorite part of the review, I give you not the explanation you want, but the explanation you need. Wait, you want it and need it. But anyway, now in the comic books, Legion is actually the son of none other than Professor X. That's right, Professor Xavier is actually Legion's father. Now, I'm pretty sure he doesn't know for the majority of David's life, but that's not the point. The point is that, of course, one of the most powerful mutants of all time, and Professor X, gives birth to one of the most powerful mutants of all time in Legion. Now, that being said, I think it's pretty obvious why I'm bringing this up, and that David's father was in Episode 2 of Legion. Do I think that whoever it was, was Professor X? Now, first off, we didn't see the guy's face. David wanted to, but was for some reason blocking it out, probably due to some traumatic memories. But is that man X? I'm gonna say no. So, again, we are in a parallel universe, so that means David could have different parents, David could have different powers, you know, who knows? That guy also could be his non-biological father, his stepdad, and just a uh, real creepy dude, as an aside. But as he is a real creepy dude, I think it's almost certain that he's not Xavier. Um, anyways, I hope not, because that would kind of sully my, my thoughts of him. Anyways, uh, so we will find out more about that, hopefully, in this season. The next thing I want to bring up is that I think, in fact, David does have different powers than in the comic books. I think he has some of his own including at least telepathy and telekinesis. Uh, for those of you who don't know, telepathy means he can read minds, and telekinesis means he can move objects with his mind. Now, he was able to read his honey's mind, Sydney, that is, and he was able to move an MRI machine out into the open. Also, he was in the MRI machine. So not only was he able to uh, move that whole object, but he was able to separate himself from the object. I think that's pretty cool, and it's kind of a small demonstration of his power, as we've already had some, but none quite so, I want to say, nimble. Anyways, let's jump right into it. So, we've gotten some answers this episode, but we also have a lot more questions. And here we go! So, the government is still hunting David, as he's holed up with some other mutants. Looks like somewhere in the woods in a glass fortress. Now, they haven't given us too many answers about that, but I do kind of want to take an aside really quick. So, it seems to me from the settings and the things that we've been seeing, that Legion is taking place somewhere between the 60s and 70s. But... They've also shown technology that is even futuristic from our own time. So, you're telling me that they can't find him in the woods? You, they don't have any thermal scanners to find a bunch of, uh, you know, people in the woods? Maybe they've taken care of it. You know, maybe I'm giving them a little too much discredit. But it seems to me like a plot hole that a sophisticated government agency led by the eye, which is the curly-headed man, um, can't find a bunch of people in the middle of nowhere. 
seems a little far-fetched to me. But they are hunting David. So, you know, there's a lot of suspense built up. We're not really sure how close they are. We're not really sure if the mutants even have any defense for it. But what we do know is that Melania Bird is hellbent on fixing Legion. She wants to get uh, his memories patched up. She wants to find out what makes him broken and make him whole again. She says that many times in the episode. I think even more so, she, she knows that most mutants have been called sick their whole lives. You know, not special, not good, but sick, bad. David, even more so. He hears voices. Uh, I mean, if you were completely sane and heard voices, it would still mess with you. And to be told you're sick and crazy your whole life, Melania Bird really understands this. And I really see a lot of compassion in her. So I'm inclined to believe that I think she is one of the good people. Uh, but she is hell-bent on making David whole again. So David has to go through memory work with uh, Tommy Wallace and talk work with her. Now, memory work is exactly what it sounds like. Tommy actually dives everyone in to uh, David's memories and they get to experience them uh, in the third person. But uh, I have seen some bad things from David in episode one, but my goodness, does his past seem scary. We saw the uh, devil with the yellow eyes multiple times in this episode, and it looked like a couple times in his memories. Now, they didn't say that Melania and Tonomy saw it as well, but they pretty much implied it. There were some very, very scary memories. Uh, let's go into um, one of the scarier ones. When David is talking to his uh, psychiatrist in the office, Dr. Poole. Dr. Poole is talking to him, and they're going back and forth. They're talking about uh, David's girlfriend leaving. And then a time skip happens, which means David repressed a part of the memory and it just jumps. Now, Tanami notices that as he is well versed in memories and they go back and they look at it. And what happens? Mr. Poole, or Dr. Poole rather, asks David about what another memory uh, talks to him about. Legion is with his father. And they are talking to the stars on the hood of his car. It would be a magnificent memory if uh, Legion's father didn't give me the creeps. So Legion says, Dad, the stars talk to me. And his dad replies, yeah, they do. He's an astronomer, so that actually kind of makes sense without him being crazy. Or does it? Do they actually speak to Legion's father? That's my guess. I don't know what you guys think. That's my guess is that, you know, Mutants tend to give birth to mutants. We talked about that earlier with Professor Xavier in the comic books. So I think his father, if not uh, biological, that this astronomer dude is a real creepy mutant. Anyways, the uh, they're talking, and uh, apparently the stars are speaking to David, but they're saying some really scary or very important things. So David tries to open up to his psychiatrist about this. And as he does, the closet door slowly starts to open. Who could it be? I mean, we don't know, but we got to guess the uh, devil with the yellow eyes. He's the only really creepy persona we've seen of David's mind. Could there be more? Of course. Could it be something else? Of course. But that's kind of what it seems to me. Now, whatever the stars have said to David are clearly very important to the story or at least to his mind. So when David tries to open up, we see this closet door open and David freaks out because he thinks that whatever's behind it is going to kill the psychiatrist. So, uh, you know, he starts pulling back, he starts pulling back and we kind of see this is how David must have been pretty much his whole life. He can't really open up because he's afraid of what might happen if he does. You know, which, of course, leads people to believe that he's probably a little more loco than he is. Anyway, uh, 
So the psychiatrist goes to close the door and nothing happens. But what do you think David thought would happen? I actually think David thinks that the devil with the yellow eyes was going to like lash out and attack. Like not use his powers, like actually jump out of the closet. Which begs the question, um, does David actually not control that guy? Is that guy uh, real in the physical world? Can he exist in the physical world? Or are they just David's powers and, you know, his mind's playing tricks on him or the devil's playing tricks on him? I'm kind of leaning towards the devil being able to do sort of whatever he wants. You know, he's probably a, a very strong mutant. He probably has his own powers. So, I mean, I mean, David has to be able to control it. He must have seen something like that before to have been so afraid. So we see that, but uh, Dr. Poole closes the door successfully, and we move on. But one of the other very big memories that we get into is um, David laying in his bed and his father reading him the scariest sounding children's book that I have ever heard. And so uh, even Tommy says... Um, did your dad really read that to you every night? And David says he doesn't want to talk about it. So was David's mind playing tricks on him, or did that really happen? And I gotta say, I think it really happened. So the room starts to shake, and then, you know, everything starts shaking. Everyone starts freaking out in the memory, um, and they would kind of skip forward. And... It seems to me like, you know, Melania Bird and Tonomy saw something terrifying. Um, so what was that terrifying thing? We also kind of know that Sydney saw the devil. So what, what does this mean for David? You know, what does this mean? You know, I think it kind of means that not only did everyone think that he was crazy, not only does he hear voices, but he had an abusive as hell childhood. So he has reasons to be crazy. He's actually very well adjusted for everything that's happened in his life. Uh, so go you, David. You're doing real well. And I've kind of already fallen in love with you. Shh. Anyways, so David has actually had a terrible, terrifying childhood. My guess is, is that during that story is when the devil with the yellow eyes first appeared to him. That's why it's such an important memory for him. But we'll find out more in the next episodes, I'm sure. That is a huge part of the season so far. Uh, if not, you know, the, the biggest mystery, one of the, um, you yeah, know, who is this devil with the yellow eyes? Who is David's father? Are they related in any way? My first guess was that the devil was actually David's father. So, um, however, we didn't see the guy's face. However, it seems, you know, not like a weird demon creature. So we'll have to see on that. Uh, tell me your guys' thoughts as well. Yeah, who, who is the devil? Because that is probably the biggest question plaguing us today. And then, of course, what role of importance does uh, David's father play? Again, my guess is that they are intertwined. And we will see how that goes. Now, Moving forward to some other key parts of the episode. David's sister has been caught by the government. Caught, captured, I'm not sure. She might have even just been like taken in for questioning. You know, she's looking for David. Um, and looks like the government also has erased uh, his records from uh, his mental hospital as well as his doctors. And where is that doctor though too? Like, we don't even know. Like he, He's probably dead in a ditch somewhere is, is my guess. But... So she goes looking for him, the, the government captures her, and David sees it with his mind. Now, I'm not actually sure um, if that's just some sort of telepathy or if it's a new power altogether, you know? He saw it happen, I think, real time, you know? He saw you know, her asking about David, and then he saw the government going towards her. David is a very, very good guy. Yeah, you know, he's very worried about her. The devil with the yellow eyes makes an appearance. He starts freaking out. 
But another cool part of the scene is the MRI machine actually catches what his brain is doing as he's seeing it. The MRI tech, uh, his name is Kerry, believes that he's never seen anything like that before. So like they are on the verge of a scientific discovery, all thanks to David. Yeah. It was also said in this episode that David is the key to multiple things. And I think that that MRI machine uh, you know, lighting up the way it was is actually whatever they're talking about, or at least part of it. You know, whatever discovery they're about to make is going to help them in the future. It was very small. It was very small. Um, but I think that some TV shows are very good about that. You know, some of the important parts they downplay. You know, he runs out of the room saying, oh my god, Eureka, what a discovery. And then the devil happens, and you know, we kind of forget about it. You know, he moves the MRI machine out into the woods. So it's, it doesn't seem as important as that, but I think it was actually huge. And then after that all occurs, David tries to leave. He tries to get out of there, he tries to go save his sister. And who comes to the rescue is Sydney. Now, Sydney actually doesn't know why David's leaving. He's kind of afraid uh, it's because of her. <sighs> Their relationship, gotta love it. And she even offers like, David, we can all lands. David, David, don't go, we can all lands. It's so cute, it's so cute. I love them together. I really, really love them together. I start talking. David explains about his sister. And Sydney says the smart thing. David, do the work. David, figure out your powers. You know, millennia, the guys, we can all help you. You can help yourself. You just got to stay. And David cools down, um, hears the wisdom, and decides to stay. stay. Thank goodness. Uh, so they, they go back, continue the uh, talk therapy, and, of course, the uh, memory therapy. Um, speaking of that, let's go into their relationship. They've gotten a little bit closer um you know some of the some of the memories that they've shared now again sydney has seen the yellow devil he knows kind of what david has gone through knows david's crazy a little bit i think or just like the voices understands them a little more and they talk um they kind of uh reconcile and it was just it was very heartwarming and in an eye-opening episode it was very comforting. I like their relationship. I said in my last review that uh, you know she isn't listed as a uh, full season cast member, at least where I've looked. Um, I hope, I hope, I hope I'm wrong about that. You know, I just want to see her forever. I want to see her until the end of time. I hope they get married and nothing goes wrong. But that you know rarely happens. I'm sure something undoubtedly will go wrong. But. We end the episode with David's sister sitting in uh, some sort of dirty surgical room, and then the, the eye walks in with a tank full of eels, which I don't know if you know this, but it's like the most scary fish. I mean, like piranhas are one thing, eels are way worse in my opinion. And... We don't get to see anything. We don't know if torch's about to happen. We can only infer that it is. But uh, the eye ends the episode saying, shall we get started? I am hyped for the next episode. Hyped, hyped, hyped. Now, we got a lot of questions, a lot of answers in this episode. Um, you know, questions being some of the same from before, like, Yellow Devil, who is it? Uh, Dad, who is it? Even Mom, who is it? Uh, does David have his own powers? Are these all uh, the people in his mind? Um, what's going to happen with the government? What's going to happen with his sister? The only answers we got are um, kind of the powers of other people. I was wrong about Melania Bird. She is also telepathic as opposed to um, the memory person who I thought she was, but that's fine. Um, the cool thing is that she kind of teaches David how to uh, quiet the voices in his head. I thought that was very cool. The whole, like, turn down the speaker's portrayal of it was very nice. Uh, Tommy, of course, is the memory guy, which means that the uh, woman that Tommy was with 
is in fact the fire person. So we've learned some more about his comrades, um, a little more, a little more about Sydney and their relationship. But again, all the main plot points still have a lot of questions attached, which just makes me so hyped for the rest of the season. I said that the plot is going to lead it, and it is just the little bits and pieces that we're getting. It's it's like they know how good of a story they have, and they're just like teasing us little by little with just how traumatic and spectacular it is. Anyways, guys, uh, I am about to wrap it up here. I have so much fun reviewing Legion. It is one of my favorite shows ever already. Uh, I can't stop talking about it. Uh, I love it. You know, I'm trying to get my videos shorter for you guys, but there's so much to explain, so much to delve into, and, you know, again, I just like it a lot. If you stuck it out this far, uh, check out our other videos, like our videos, uh, subscribe to our channel. We do a lot of good stuff here. Look for me again real soon. And also, I will be reviewing next week's episode of Legion as well. So I will see you then, if not sooner. All right, guys, and take care until then.